Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Okay, Corey, so this is an important episode, and we're going to take a topic that our guest says might be boring and dry at times as we talk about accounting, but we're going to make it exciting. And the reason is, is this company is making it a lot easier to do for everybody. It's so, not boring to you. You're the spreadsheet master. Oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Most farmers do. Yes. So, Corey, before we get in and introduce who he is, right now, what does your book work process look like? Oh, boy. Um, we have a couple different programs, it feels like, that yeah. we're using, or just a normal old uh, Excel document. Yeah. Um, it feels like we're all over the place. Okay, good. So we have Ian Harley here. He is with Traction Ag, has more than 25 years of experience in sales management and ag tech companies, delivers accounting operations, agronomy software to the farmers prior to being the co-founder of Traction Ag. You held roles at Granular, Trimble, and Fieldworks? Farmworks. Farmworks. All right. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. So tell us a little bit more about who you are, what your journey was in ag, and then we'll get into what traction ag is. Yeah, well, I'm based up in northeast Indiana now, a small town called uh, Auburn's where our office is, and uh, we have a team of about eight there. Uh, about 25 across the country are working for traction ag now, and we're developing the first uh, web application specializing in specifically farm accounting. And... You know, when I define farm accounting, you know, we're providing a balance sheet and income statement. That's my definition of farm accounting. So that in conjunction with your uh, your revenue and margin per bushel, those are the two key metrics that Traction are looking to enable. And you know, were that true web application, so any connected device. So my background, as you say, I worked with Farmworks for a long time. You'll gather from my accent, not originally from the U.S. Uh, so I sold Farmworks everywhere outside of the Americas. Okay. Uh, ultimately, 25 countries, 20 languages, and then became a co-owner in that company here. And... Uh, Managed the business for a couple of years before we sold out to Trimble. Uh, had a short spell with Granular, who were a great uh, farm operations company. And yeah, just been working in ag tech and helping growers uh, understand their farm financial performance yeah, for a long time. So 20 that, languages. Yeah, that's not a southern Indiana accent. So where did, where did you grow up? I originally from Scotland, and I was uh, managing the, the farm accounts for my family farming business. And uh, it's really tough. It's tough to manage uh, what is a multi-year profit center because you, you're... You're starting that growing crop, you harvest it, you're storing it. You know, it can take two to three years before you really understand the profitability. And, you know, non-ag specific accounting applications just don't deal with that well. So it, I want go, go ahead. Is the farm, the family farm back in Scotland still still going? Yeah, we were a seed business. Uh, my father had some farms associated with that. But we were a traditional uh, seed processing business, uh, potatoes, cereals, seeds, and provided seed hybrids for, for growers. Very so cool. a potato seed, isn't that a potato? It is, yeah, yeah. So is it how is it true? Like you could take a full potato, and how many times can you chop it up and still have a viable seed? Oh, I mean, technically, you, you typically don't want to do that because it introduces disease into the seed. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, but um, yeah, the reason why seed production, potato seed production, is based in Scotland because a lot of seed path, potato seed pathogens are spread by viruses and. It's colder up there, so there's less aphids right. to spread them. So, do you treat a potato like you do, like a soybean or a corn seed, for diseases? Uh, I think there are now some treatments. Okay. I mean, there's a lot more seed treatments tied to the cereal side of the right. business. But see, I, maybe I'm doing it wrong in my garden because I take a potato and I look at where the eye is, and I cut an eye off, and I cut another eye off, and now I've got my individual potato plants. But does it grow potatoes? It grows potatoes. Yeah, that, no, that works. <laughs> but I'm not... But not know. recommended for large scale. Correct, <laughs> yes. I, I don't have to worry necessarily about the disease as much. But anyway, we've got a little bit off track. Before we get right back on track, I want to ask about the 20 languages. What is the hardest language that you know that you learned? Oh, I didn't learn them. I just had the software translated. So I worked oh. with a group of dealers, and they would do the translations for us, and then we had dealers who distributed it That's in local so cool. countries. So. That is, uh, that's impressive. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, now we'll get into another very cool company, and that's Traction Ag. So you mentioned that it is a web-based app for farm accounting, and it's going to help deliver some things that I need as a banker, a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement, correct? Yeah, and actually even more important than a balance sheet for the grower is what we call a market value balance sheet because, of course, the uh, growers have a series of assets and liabilities, and they change dynamically. Your equipment valuations, your land valuations, you know, those key assets brackets and again that's one of the unique deliverables of traction is that right. you can provide that market value balance sheet so you're getting a true 
market equity balance on your farming operation to support your, your lending. I like that. Do you incorporate market value in the balance sheets that you give your banker, Corey? Probably not like we should, no. <laughs> I, it's crazy. Like, I consider myself, our, our farm, to be top tier, but then if you, the reason we do these shows is because I learn this stuff, and then I don't feel so top tier anymore. But well, I got to ask you, Corey, do you, do you think you know your cost of production? My cost of production, yes. And you do that, how do you calculate that, um, typically? Usually with just a calculator, <laughs> writing everything down, you know, it's, it's always a guess, right, or an estimate until it's real, right? Like, because we don't know the yield or we don't know what this input's going to cost. So we got to go through and do, get all that. But, yeah. Well, that's what Traction's trying to do for yeah. you. We're trying to aggregate that data from different sources, preferably yep. digitally, so you don't have to key it. And you don't have to write it down. We're getting operation standard data from John Deere. We're getting climate data for your field records. Uh, we're getting your bank data from digitally through your bank feed and we're aggregating that together for you to build out that true cost of production. So it's a one-stop shop, right? Everything's linked. Yeah, everything is linked, yeah, fully integrated. That's what, we, we just got onto John Deere Ops a couple, couple years ago and uh, it's amazing what you can link that to and how cool the data is and it's, the options are endless. So when you're working with people, what would you say is their biggest struggle? What is the farmer's biggest struggle right now with getting an accurate break-even number? I think just collecting all the data in a timeless and accurate way uh, so that at the end of the season you can build out that field profit center analysis. And there's a lot of complexity there. And people have different uh, ideas about how to do equipment costing, for example. So we have to build software that's flexible enough that the grower can you know, approach it from their particular mindset. So we can uh, associate a default cost of equipment, um, but we can equally uh, define an ownership value. So again, back to this market value piece. What did you pay for it? How long are you going to keep it? What's it going to be worth? And we make sure it's dynamic. So, you know, if you ultimately sell that piece of equipment, we'll go back and reconcile the true ownership costs for that lifetime ownership of the piece of equipment, allocate all your rep repairs and parts expenses to that piece of equipment, and amortize them properly across all the field use. How are you valuing wow. equipment in, like, this market, right? Normally, equipment depreciates, but now it's appreciating, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. How Are you guys linked with, like, a company that values equipment? Not currently. That's something we're looking to do in the future. And again, oh. we still have a lot of work to do. Um, standardized equipment database and a yeah. link to one of the auction sites or one of the equipment valuation online platforms. Today, my recommendation to growers is to use those online sources and populate yeah. the data in. Well, we can get you a good connection that might have uh, might be able to help you there with your integration on the equipment side. Uh, a couple of, a par proud partner of the podcast is TractorZoom. Yeah, I looked at it, and actually, they're a very attractive option for yeah. me. So they're right in our backyard. Yeah, we just got <laughs> to uh, we got to build out functionality, but the, all of those digital integrations are important to us. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about banks and operations data, but we want to do it with vendors too, so we can capture all your seed invoice detail digitally rather than having to key it in. And I know that there's going to be some of our listeners that are sitting here and thinking the same way I am, and really excited. Just like you said, the cost of that piece of equipment, what it was to your farm, especially when you allocate repair bills. Because I don't know of very many people that track exactly what a piece of equipment actually costs on their farm because they ordered oil filters, they ordered parts from John Deere, and they didn't necessarily put it with the 9520. Yeah. It was just, this is a repairs expense. So that's kind of a neat way to look at the cost of equipment and get that detailed. But that's going to be overwhelming to some people, having all that information. So is it simple to take in? Yeah, simple is a... a Dynamic word, I guess. You have to spend some time uh, making sure you get some validity to the data you put into the system so that right. you trust that data is coming out of the system. But again, you know, we're trying to make that easy for you by yep. capturing it digitally for you rather than you have to key it. But you know, there's complexities around equipment. If you do a big planter rebuild, for example, you know, and you spend $20,000 on a planter rebuild, in a farming scenario, you want to amortize that over a couple of years, maybe four, you know, to get the true allocation of that right. Uh, expense. Right. So is this something that you can take to your tax accountant at the end of the year? Yep. Today we're about ba cash balance sheet and income statement. We also do a cash schedule F. So you've actually got that schedule F report done wow. directly out of traction. And we handle all your payroll side too. So if you want to do your payroll on traction, we digitally file all your state and federal tax returns. Oh my you know, gosh. we handle 943 payroll forms and far farm specific payroll forms and uh, everything's done digitally for you. So it's a huge time saving. And that's, yeah, it is. That's been my complaint about the programs I have used in the past for this kind of stuff. It's great for balance sheets or this or that, but it never tied into tax, tax type stuff. So that's do you have to, how do you deal with that? Like, because different states have different laws. 
On the payroll side, we actually use a third party who manage all of the payroll tax calculations for us. So we provide an easy to use interface for the grower. He's basically just keying hours, overtime hours, bonus, et cetera, any deductions, and then all the calculations done for you. Yeah, wow, I, I'm impressed because this sounds like it is. It's huge time savings. It's probably a cost savings when you talk time and money and it probably, once you get used to it, is something that's fairly easy to use. Do you feel like right now that just the sheer amount of work and effort that goes into record keeping is why some of our listeners don't like doing it? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you've kind of got three pillars of success. You're managing your operation, you're managing your agronomy, and you're managing your finances. And I think if you want to win the future, and that's what Traction want to do for you, you've got to pay attention to that financial component too. And uh, that's what we're enabling you to do. Wow. On a unified dashboard. Go in and just look at it. And you can link with any bank? Almost any bank, yeah. Um, there's some small regional banks. We use a third party, a product called Plaid, to do that bank linking. Yeah. So. Again, we don't have to manage the security of the connection. That's done by uh, a NASDAQ-listed multi-million dollar company. And, but yeah, almost any bank and credit cards too. So, and we provide a mobile app on your phone. So if you've got individuals using farm credit cards, they pick up some parts, they can scan the receipt right in their phone, start the transaction, and they've got that receipt tied to it. So very quick to capture the data either on your phone or back in the office. So, Do you have any customers using this? I do not. No, this is the first time... I really do dove into the product, but it's probably going to be a recommendation. I mean, the way I use our business credit cards the same way. I take a picture of receipt and send it off to myself in an email. So I have a digital picture of the receipt instead of carrying it around, but this is light years ahead. So can Traction Ag be used for non-farming businesses or is it tailored for the farmer? Well, that's one of the unique parts of Traction Ag is that we manage multiple entities within a single account one farming entity, but if you're running a seed business or a trucking business, or if you're just, you know, have any other kind of business, or if you just want to maintain your personal balance sheet, you can do that all in one single traction account. And again, when we come back to market value balance sheet, you can then aggregate either all of your entities to give you an overall equity balance across your land owning entities wow. and your operating entity, or just isolate individual ones. So yeah, we can manage standard businesses. There's great invoicing capability there. So if you're doing a lot of custom work or you're selling product like hay, then you can do that through traction. We're going to have to get the podcast on tractions. Absolutely. So it's kind of, I mean, it's probably a bad word to say, but it's a household name. It's kind of like QuickBooks for farming. QuickBooks for farmers. You got right? it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, 60% of farmers use QuickBooks, and the uh, QuickBooks makes it really tough to figure out that cost of production. Yeah. And it I've, certainly I've doesn't deal that. with the farm-specific stuff. And we've preached, we've probably done a dozen episodes around knowing your break even, the importance of knowing your cost of production, the importance of tracking your expenses. I mean, there's a reason over the last three and a half years that we've said this is an important thing to work at. Yeah, that's why I was excited to come on the show because farm for profit, farm for the future. I mean, yeah. that's what yeah. we're enabling for your customers. Yeah, absolutely. I like too that it's in the cloud. The app thing got me, I got distracted because that's exciting. Anywhere you're at, yeah, we have tractors. We have customers running their payroll as they drive down the field in their autopilot, and they're pulling out their iPad, putting in their payroll information, and they're all Handy. done. So, in the cloud is great, but it also can provide some issues, right? How are you keeping people's data safe? Yeah, and again, we use third parties to handle all of that. So, I mean, all of our data is on Amazon Web Services, which is pretty typical for cloud service providers. We use a product called Okta, which is two-factor authentication. So, yep. you're familiar with that. You know, yeah. text message to the phone. We're making sure we keep your account secure. We're members of a body called the Ag Data Transparency. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I've heard But about it that. guarantees that we only use your data to provide the service. We've got no business model tied to any other use of your data right. at all. And it's the grower's data. He owns it. If he ever chose to leave the platform, he'd have the option to download it or delete it. It's his choice. So That's good because is really good. that data is worth something to a lot of people. Absolutely, know, right? yeah. So. And obviously, financial data the most sensitive. So, yeah. So That's like the say, important part. We've told our listeners that this is important, but what benefits have you seen from your clients to the farm when they know what their break-even is? What, is? what does that give them the power for? Well, knowing the break-even, I think, is really important for marketing. And I mean, that's a component of the application we're still building out. We recently acquired uh, Granular Business Technology, if you're familiar with that. And that has some great functionality that we're going to maintain that very sophisticated operations platform but pull some of that great functionality into our uh, traction business component too. Yeah, because we talked about that. It, we also talked about how it allows you to make quicker decisions. I mean, like you said, on the great marketing side, if you know what your break-even is and it's a living number, you can make a quicker sale. But you can also 
make quicker decisions on opportunities to purchase equipment, to pick up more ground, to say yes or no and negotiate on like, fertilizer I like prices. How it's living and breathing, right? Like I know my cost of production roughly based on a spreadsheet that I did probably two weeks ago, right? So I know we're close, but market goes up or goes down or equipment value go up or go down, like they could be different today. Right. I, I'm excited. I almost want to, like, not almost. I'm pretty sure we're going to sign up the podcast because it's a living and breathing company now. It started off as a hobby, and our listeners have made such a great growth opportunity for us that it's become a business. And we need to know what the cost of episodes are to then make sure that we're maintaining a, pro- a positive profit margin. We don't, you can't be farmed for profit if you can't run a successful business yourself. So knowing that would probably give us a lot more power to make decisions when it comes to partners. Yeah, I mean, job cost accounting is the non-industry specific term. You've got to know the, the revenue expenses with that job. It's a fuel profit center analysis in our terminology. Yeah. So you mentioned how well the software works, the program works with the accounting side for tax filing. You can prepare the form, the Schedule F. How well does it get the information to a banker? Is there a login that you can give them? Is there is it easy to print and send reports? How's that relationship work? Yeah, you can actually share your traction account with your trusted advisors. It's fully in the grower's control, of course, but if you have an accountant who wants access to your account so that he can make journal entries, depreciation at the end of the year, for example, if the banker wants to see specific information, he can see that. Can I hide um, certain things from the banker? Not currently. That's, <laughs> just, that's looking for something in the future, but... Uh, I don't want Tanner to see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, yeah, that distillery tour that we just went on. Yeah. That's right it's a off. farm expense. <laughs> it was. We had a meeting there. Yeah, and we manage all your family living for you. And again, that's a unique farm feature, you know, to track yeah. all that family living through the same account. A lot of farmers don't track that, right? Like it's it's something living and breathing, but they, or, or they do track it and it's separate, right? But it should be probably all together, right? It's a hard number as a banker for customers and prospects when you ask them what their family living is. Sometimes it's like, oh, my wife, she makes $45,000 a year. That's our family living. Is it? I mean, it, it, does the farm not pay for the electricity bill? Does they not, you know, just trying to actually get down to what that number is would be really valuable to a lot of people. Yeah, and they like to keep it simple. They're managing their entire finances through a single account, but they've got to segregate that piece out for yeah. them. So we give them a family living report to do that. Wow. Very cool. We know we haven't asked yet. Is that What's it cost? Yeah, so we have a pro package, which I've got to say, 90% of our growers adopt that because it tracks all your supply inventory, your harvested crop inventory, all that operations component in conjunction with the accounting. And it's an annual cost, $3,800 per year. $3,800. Wow, that's not bad. Yeah, you've got to value your own time. It's all about time saving and giving you uh, efficient information that you can make decisions on and you quickly recoup that volume. And that gets access to everything? That you yes. guys offer? Yeah. There's no upcharges after the fact or anything like that? That's all of our accounting and operations. Our payroll is $750 a year for the first five employees, and it's $150 a year for each additional full-time equivalent employee. And we do have an agronomy component, which happy to talk about, uh, and that is separate for soil sampling, soil fertility. Oh, okay. So you tie in that. Yep. That's all linked into your same account. What's that all about? Uh, so you can create grids or zones of your fields. You can go out and do your own sampling, and you can create recommendation maps based on either uh, soil lab equations or we partner with all the soil labs digitally, so you capture all that soil nutrient information digitally into the account, and you can create recommendations from that information. Very cool. So you could, could you use that to hire a soil sampler? If you didn't want to do them yourself, you could, you could hire another soil sampler out? Yeah, I mean, our goal is to, to fulfill the demand for people who are doing that service. So, okay. yeah. Oh, I really like this. I, I mean, one of the statistics that we looked up before this is that 60% of farmers are using accounting systems like that QuickBooks that is not specific to agriculture. Correct. That's a big group. Yeah. That's a large group. That's large people that will, will continue to benefit. But the other thing I'm thinking about is even as generations are starting to adjust, as farmers are getting older, there's got to be an easier way for the next generation to take over because dad who's 70 – may have only ever done this with a shoebox and a notebook and an old computer program. And the old computer programs suck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will not use them. It feels like I have a floppy disk in the yeah. computer, and it's just so clunky. And I'm sure it was like cutting edge at the time, but I cannot stand it. And Dad will still use that kind of stuff, and I can't. But uh, knowing your numbers is so huge. We know our numbers, like I feel, I feel like we know our numbers pretty good. 
but we've started – it's still been like purchasing a new combine, purchasing a new sprayer, buy, making big capital purchases. I still feel like it's very emotional. We've started putting it up on a big whiteboard and knowing and visualizing everything. This seems like we could get rid of the whiteboard, the Excel document, and we could visualize everything really nice. And it's so much easier to make a decision when you know where you're at. Yeah. And yeah. you can still, go ahead. Well, that's what Traction are working hard to do. I mean, that succession planning piece and understanding when we do the market value balance sheet, we accrue for all deferred taxes. So you can actually see the, the true balance on the farm. And we're working with a lot of operations that are transitioning you know, through generations. And because we can manage multiple entities within that same account, it's very easy for them to, to start to transition all of that, whether wow. it's their tax efficient methods of uh, transitioning equipment, for example, while all that's managed in Traction for you. Very cool. Yeah, I really like this. I mean, we covered a ton in a short amount of time. What, what are we missing? The key thing for us is we've still got a lot of work to do. I mean, just to be transparent with your listeners, so the acquisition of the granular operations technology has been great for us because it's going to rapidly expand our ability on the operations side, grain marketing, whole crop planning and budgeting. Uh, we've been very focused on the accounting and capturing the accurate data because we think that's the, you've got to have that right at your core right. to move forward. But yeah. as we start to build out cash flow budgets, uh, crop planning and budgeting so that you can forecast for the future, you know, you're really securing that future for your farm. It's really going to be even more all-encompassing. Yeah, that's the goal, absolutely. Yeah. What's, what's next? Is there anything you got on the target to add? Yeah, as I say, on the operations side, so adding grain marketing capability. Again, we're looking for integrations there. We'll build out the FSA and digital filing so that you can work with your crop insurance partner. You can work with the government where you have to in a digital fashion. I mean, all of this, these are time savings for growers that are going to be important for the future. We've got a long roadmap ahead of us. It's fun. In my brain right now, I'm mapping companies that I want to connect with Traction Ag yeah, yeah. that just integrate everything that a farmer can use and have a dashboard that's going to be so valuable. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Tractor Zoom, but uh, the big input suppliers are a great uh, opportunity for us. We were speaking to two of the largest co-ops in the country and you know, to aggregate your seed and fertilizer yeah. and all your invoice detail digitally from them rather than having to rekey it be a great opportunity. Yes, it would. No, that would be a really good deal. Well, I got, don't have any additional questions on my sheet except for the payoff question at the end of every show. Yeah. Well, how about you? Did you run out? Yeah. This has been really good. But we ask every one of our guests what success looks like to them. doesn't have to necessarily be for traction. <laughs> it can be for Ian. But uh, you can think about that if you want a couple of moments. I'll kind of summarize what we talked about today, and we'll come back to that. So what does success look like to you? Listeners, we are here today with Ian Harley of Traction. So this is a web app that is cloud-based that helps you identify the true cost of production and be a full farm financial management software. They are delivering financial solutions to growers across the Midwest, and they're looking to continue and expand. We talk all the time about why knowing your break-even is important. It helps you in decision-making, making sales, gets you quick answers without having to guess. It gives you the power to negotiate. Uh, we also know that we can look at that break-even on a lot of different ways, per bushel, per acre. We can look at the cost of a piece of equipment through this platform. Um, we can uh, continue to get accurate reports based upon accurate information that goes in, can get a market value balance sheet, which is important to know exactly where you're at. Uh, he just talked about he just talked about how they even put in deferred tax or at least a plan for what your tax might be if you sell. Uh, most farmers do struggle with record keeping. Over 60% aren't using something specifically designed for agriculture. They might just have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with finances because of how clunky a current process is, but this is a cloud-based platform that allows you the ability to take pictures from your phone and upload directly from an app. Do payroll while you're going down the field if you wanted to, to be able to do this on the fly. And uh, the fun part about it is it creates a unified dashboard. It's a platform that helps you with your payroll, can get you all the way through your tax planning process and forms directly to the banker as far as that goes. We know that the pro sign up is $3,800 a year. That may change if you're listening to this podcast in 2025 or 6 or whenever you pick this up. But at the time being, we're recording here at the National Farm Machinery Show. Did I miss anything? Pretty good overview of what we talked about today? That's a great overview, yep. All right. So what does success look like to you? Well, you know, we started this company in March 2020, so we're three years in. So you can imagine I've been pretty work-focused for the uh, last short period of time. And uh, that's been great fun. I'm 
delighted with the team we built. I founded the company with Scott Newsbaum and Brian Stark, my two co-founders, and we built this team out to 25, and we're delighted with the group of ag specialists and technology specialists that we have participating in the company. So, I mean, success for me on a business side is, you know, happy customers and a happy team, and, and traction continuing to grow and be an independent technology yeah. provider, you know, for the largest number of growers we can possibly uh, touch. Yeah, I guess on a personal basis, it's kind of the same. You gotta have a happy family, don't yes. you? And uh, yep. yeah. yeah, we work hard to do that. Oh, I love that answer. Corey, do we, you have a challenge for the listeners? I, I do, but we did miss one. So we knew how much it costs, 3,800, but what's the best way for someone to come on board? Yeah, you can actually start a trial. I mean, if you're at the National Farm Machinery Show today, stop by our booth, you can get a live demo and you can start a trial right there. Um, it's a 30 day trial, you get full functionality, connect up your bank, connect up your John Deere or Climate, and you've got your full farming information in there as a, as a grounding to get started with traction. That is a great question. And my challenge is know your numbers. We've said it plenty of times. This is a company that can help you know your numbers. Yeah, yeah. know your numbers from your actual accounting transactions. Yes. Yep. yep, that's the goal. Well, Ian, this has been a pleasure. We appreciate you taking time away from your booth. Hopefully you guys continue to have a successful farm show. But for today and for our listeners, we hope you have a good one. Thank you. It's been great to be here.